Okay, so one six combination of functions. If you are adding functions together, okay, if you see something that says parentheses f plus g of x, what it's really asking for is for you to take the function of x, the function of f of x, and add it to the function of g of x. Okay? When you have difference and it shows f minus g of x, you're taking the function of f of x and you're subtracting g of x from it. So you go in the order that it gives you. When it's the product, it says f of g of x equals f of x times g of x. And quotient is f over g of x equals the function of f of x divided by the function of g of x, where the denominator, whatever's in the denominator, cannot equal zero. So they're going to give you two functions, or possibly three functions, in your directions. This says f of x equals 2x plus 1. g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 1. They want you to find f plus g of x. That means I am finding f of x plus g of x. So I'm going to take the whole equation for f of x, and I'm going to plug it in right here so that I get 2x plus 1. Plus, because I'm adding them together, I take the whole equation of g of x and plug it in there. x squared plus 2x minus 1. When I add those together, what do you end up getting? x squared plus 4x. <laughs> x squared plus 4x because the negative 1 and the positive 1 cancel. That's the first part. You're adding functions together. You have to, what do you mean, like spact or something else? No, nope. you leave it like that. Okay, when we are finding f minus g of x, what I'm actually doing is finding f of x minus g of x. So I'm going to take the problem from the instructions and say 2x minus 1, or plus 1, minus. Now this is where you want to put parentheses. Because you want to put parentheses so that you remember that this is getting distributed to all three of those portions, that minus. If you do not put parentheses, I guarantee you will mess that up and you'll only subtract negative x squared. Okay? So put parentheses around it when you're doing minus. So I have two x, so I have negative x squared, yes? And then I have two x minus two x. Zero. I have one minus negative one. Yeah, it turns into a double negative, which is a positive. So you get negative x squared plus 2. Okay, put parentheses around it, or you will forget to distribute that minus sign into all parts. Um, then you have multiplication. Multiplication is pretty simple because basically you're foiling. Okay, at the, at the most you're going to foil. So if I have uh, f of x equals x squared and I have g of x equals 1 minus x squared and I want f times g of x, I simply change that to f of x times g of x. So I plug again, this goes in for here. So I have x squared and then you will put parentheses and this goes in for here and I have 1 minus x. I distribute. So I get x squared and I get minus x cubed. Okay, x squared minus x cubed. So on that, if you have like x squared plus 6, you would be foiling. Okay, you can totally do that. Yes. That I don't know. <laughs> Jeremiah, I don't know. William? Okay, the hardest one is going to be division for you because then you have to apply other rules. Like in this, we have radicals happening. Can you have a radical in the denominator? No. no. So we're going to have to do some fun stuff. Yes. So I technically have f of x divided by g of x. So I'm going to plug this in for the top portion. So I have radical x over, and this is the bottom portion, the square root of 4 minus x squared. How do you get rid of a radical from the denominator spot? No. You gotta multiply it, but by what? You said four plus. Okay, so let's talk about this. 
Um, if I don't want radicals in the denominator, you have to multiply by the opposite of that. The opposite, well, yeah, opposite of that radical, right? Okay, that's what you said. Okay. I also, <laughs> I also can see something here too. This is four minus x squared, right? What do you know about both of those things? They both have a square root, right? So if they have a square root, I can do that as well. I also, whenever I have a fraction, I have to list the domain and range. The domain, yes. The domain, okay. The domain and the range. Let's talk about the domain of this. The domain comes from that bottom section, radical 4 minus x squared. So I'm going to take that 4 minus x squared, right? And what do you do with that? You would say equals 0, subtract, subtract, negative x squared equals negative 4. It takes this, you know, divide by negative 1. And you get x squared equals 4. Take the square root, and you get what? x equals plus or minus 2. So when you go to write the domain of this, okay, it's going to be in segments. It's going to be from 0 to infinity, okay? And the, well, the domain of, we'll talk about that. The domain of this is, of g, is negative 2, 2, okay? So the domain of this g part is negative 2 to 2, okay? What is the domain of this top part of the fraction? Can I plug anything in there? All non-negative Well, yes, all non-negative real numbers. So from 0 to infinity. So this domain, this is how you get domains when it's fractions, it's rough. So this domain is 0 to infinity, okay? Now, to find a domain of the overall thing, we have to combine these together. So you're taking the domain of each individual function, and then you're going to make your domain off of that, okay? What is the, per the lowest this one can go? Zero. Zero. It would be zero, two. Yeah, it would be zero, two. Good, Cameron. Yeah. So lowest this can go is zero, so it trumps this because it's higher up on the scale, so it's zero. And then the highest this one can go is two, even though this can go to infinity, so it's zero, two. So we take pieces of both of them to figure out what our overall domain is. Okay. And then the range in this case um, would depend on that. So technically it'd be any I can get anything out of there, so my range is fine. It's gonna be positive infinity, but they're gonna just make you find domain. Okay, so when you're finding domain of that, that's how you would work that out. Now, let's fix this. If I want to get rid of radicals, I multiply by the opposite reciprocal of that, or the opposite of that radical, yes? Because then that's going to cancel out. Okay. Which means the bottom turns into oh. 16. If I do a radical times a radical, right? So, so yeah, you're right. It's would the x would it still be x minus two? X minus 2. Right, because, or would this X minus 2 is canceled out? Because you're multiplying the 4 and the 4, then the X minus 2 will still be here. Right? So, yeah, the, the, middle, the, the middle will cancel minus out. Minus X2 is right, or X2. So, 4 and 4 is 16. The middle will cancel out because this right. will be negative 4 minus 2. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then it would be negative x squared times positive x squared, so you would get x to the negative x to the fourth, oh. right? Because you multiply when you multiply, then you add the power. Okay. And then up top, so we would have 16 uh, minus x to the fourth, right? And then up top, you would have. plus x cubed. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then from there, we can factor stuff out and reduce. Okay. Here I can factor out um, a negative 4x, right? 
and you're left with negative x squared. Down here, I can factor out a negative 4. Well, well, why can you factor out? No, out? but you can. Up top, why can't I factor it? Oh, I can't factor out a negative 4, can I? I'm being dumb. I'm just being dumb. But that's okay, because that's going to actually help us. So then if I factor out an x, I get, actually, let's factor out a negative x, so that I get 4 minus x squared. Okay, here's why. This is a difference of squares. She should have redo that. So you get 4 minus x squared, and you get 4 plus x squared, yes? Yeah. And then these would cancel? And it would leave you with negative x over 4 plus x squared, yes? Okay. So that, like I said, is going to be the hardest one, the fraction ones. Everything else, adding, subtracting, piece of cake, multiplying, piece of cake, the ones that are going to take you time are the... Um, division ones because you have to state the domain.